Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed denizens of the digital age, let us traverse the labyrinthine corridors of the music industry, where intrigue and artistry intermingle in a dance macabre of strategic machinations and calculated timing. Always calling cap on Joe Budden, except I actually believe Joe Budden this time. Joe Budden records on Friday. As soon as that is done recording, he did drop it. the song came out leaked. Remember, Joe Joe went in, like Joe went in, and, and trust me, I never want to believe that Drake even would schedule or leak something at that time. I think he definitely leaked it at that point that they couldn't have a word to say about it before their their Saturday pod, which they do on Friday around three o'clock. Hundred percent. I yeah, actually, I believe this. During, when we say that during the back and forth, and he was looking at us like we was crazy. I, yeah. also, I said that. No, no, hey, no. no, hey, no. Hey, Joe hey, said that during the beef, and I was just like, Joe, you're too full of yourself. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, which, by the way, if again, we're assuming here, but if Drake is playing, I, I do have to imagine he's also playing the media game as well, right? He's like, yo, you know, by the way, it's like, you know, part of the media game, like, for example, if you have a big story, you want to. Um, sometimes you want to drop it on Friday that it dominates the, the whole weekend because there's nothing else going to, people don't work on the weekends or you sometimes drop it on Monday to lead off the, the, the week, the week, right? So Friday or Monday, you get the biggest stories. Usually you get what I'm saying? Um, I don't know if that was coincidental, but I did notice. I was just like, yeah, no one has given no big media outlet, but me has given their opinion on this because they're all not at work. <laughs> The Breakfast Club ain't coming back till Monday. You won't get a Joe Budden podcast till Wednesday. Another one till Wednesday. Um, th there's none of these outlets, which, by the way, um, um, Joe ain't really, not Joe, I mean, um, Drake ain't really for them anyway. So I was wondering if the timing was interesting, even though Fridays are when we get music, right? We do get music on Fridays, but people kind of drop, like, if you're going to drop, why not? People usually, even if they're dropping a music video, they drop on Thursday afternoon. They drop on Thursday afternoon and it gets on DSPs at midnight. But he dropped on Friday afternoon, I believe. And I was just like, hmm, interesting. Pretty interesting. Yeah, AX. In this intricate web, we find the maestro of melodies, Drake, orchestrating not merely tunes, but a symphony of suspense, with DJ Academics acting as our keen eyed chronicler, dissecting every beat and bar with surgical precision. Behold the capstone of this latest saga, Academics, a sagacious sentinel of sound, dares to challenge the chronological choreography of Drake's latest musical offering. His suspicions are as thick as molasses, as he casts a very eye upon the timing of the track's release, questioning whether this drop was as spontaneous as it seemed, or if it was a calculated move, a strategic strike aimed at dominating the discourse. Is Drake merely a maestro of music, or is he also a Machiavelli of media, pulling strings from behind the curtain to ensure his narrative reigns supreme? Imagine, if you will, a world where the release of a song is not just an artistic expression, but a weapon in the war for cultural dominance. DJ Academics, with his ear pressed firmly to the pulse of the industry, suggests that Drake may have timed this release with the precision of a general planning a midnight raid. The Friday drop, a maneuver seemingly mundane, is scrutinized under the magnifying glass of media manipulation. Was it mere coincidence, or a deliberate move to ensure that the song would reverberate through the weekend, unchallenged and unrivaled? Academics posits a tantalizing theory, one that casts a shadow over the sunlit skies of Drake's kingdom. Could it be that Drake, a man of immeasurable influence, has taken a page from the playbook of public relations maestros, releasing his track at a time when the gatekeepers of the media are off duty, leaving the airwaves unguarded and ripe for his takeover? As the world lay dormant, Drake's song slipped into the zeitgeist, unopposed, dominating the conversation like a colossus astride the cultural landscape. This is no mere hypothesis, but a hypothesis steeped in the wisdom of experience. DJ Academics, ever the astute observer, recalls similar tactics from the annals of media warfare, where timing is everything, and the timing of a release can make or break its impact. By releasing his track on a Friday afternoon, 
Drake ensures that his creation remains unchallenged, monopolizing the minds and ears of the masses until the media machine cranks back into gear on Monday morning. But what, pray tell, is the significance of this timing? Why would Drake, a titan of the industry, need to engage in such subterfuge? Academics hints at a deeper game, one where even the giants of the music world must play by the rules of the media chessboard. Perhaps Drake is not just playing for hits and streams, but for the hearts and minds of the listeners, ensuring that his narrative is the one that dominates the discussion, leaving little room for dissent or distraction. None other than the indomitable Joe Budden, a titan of talk in his own right. The timing of Drake's latest sonic salvo is as suspect as a snake in the Garden of Eden, released at a moment calculated with such precision that it leaves one pondering whether the gods themselves conspired in its fruition. But let us not be fooled into thinking this is a one-sided affair. Joe Budden is no mere pawn in this game, he is a knight, a bishop, a rook, all rolled into one, and he will no doubt marshal his forces to counter this assault. Yet, one cannot help but marvel at the sheer audacity of Drake's maneuver, a move that speaks not only to his cunning but to his understanding of the media landscape as a battlefield where timing and strategy are as vital as the content itself. In this intricate dance of power and perception, Drake has positioned himself as the puppeteer, pulling the strings not just of his own career but of the very industry itself. And in doing so, he has reminded us all that in the world of music, as in war, victory belongs not to the swift or the strong, but to the strategist, the one who can see five moves ahead and who is willing to take risks that others would shy away from. The implications of this are profound. If Drake is indeed manipulating the timing of his releases to outmaneuver the competition, then he is not just an artist, but a strategist, wielding his influence like a sword, cutting down any who would dare to challenge his reign. And in this game of thrones, timing is everything. A Friday release, while seemingly innocuous, could be the key to maintaining his stranglehold on the charts, ensuring that his voice is the only one heard over the weekend. Yet, even as academics weaves this narrative, he does so with a hint of reluctance, as if acknowledging the brilliance of the strategy while lamenting its necessity. For in this world of calculated moves and strategic releases, where does the art end and the manipulation begin? Is Drake still the artist we once revered, or has he become something more, a puppet master pulling the strings of the music industry? ensuring that his every move is calculated for maximum impact? As we ponder these questions, one thing becomes clear, the music industry is a battlefield, and Drake is a warrior, using every tool at his disposal to maintain his dominance. Whether it's his music, his timing, or his media strategy, everything is part of a larger plan, a plan designed to keep him at the top of the game, where he can continue to shape the narrative to his liking. In the end, academics leaves us with more questions than answers as he peers into the murky depths of the music industry, searching for the truth behind the timing of Drake's latest release. Is it mere coincidence, or is it part of a grander design, one that only the most astute observers can see? Whatever the case may be, one thing is certain, in the world of music, nothing is ever as it seems, and the game is always afoot.